Hello everyone, uh, my name is Vera and welcome to my stitching corner. Today we'll be doing, um, I'll show you this. Unfortunately, it is um, black and white. I don't have a color printer, but we're gonna be working on this uh, this image. Um, it's a, a supersized uh, Sanctuary of Knowledge uh, and this is the Max color version. Um, so it's, um, it's a painting by a Randall Spangler um, and it was started by Heaven and Earth Designs. Um, so anyone who's not familiar with them, they're kind of do a lot of um, full coverages and quite large, uh, large pieces. Um, so this one is actually um, almost a thousand by uh, 749. Um, it contains 233 colors. Um, and according to Pattern Keeper, so I'm using Pattern Keeper, that totals to um, three quarters of a million of stitches. Um, so that's quite a lot of stitching. So let's get started. <laughs> I'll add a color color version picture um, in the post production. Um, so I already loaded up my first needle, um, and let's just uh, see. I'll show you kind of where I'm working at. So I'm working right on the very top um, right corner. So there's lots and lots and lots. I think about 104 pages. Uh, so I'm going to be working uh, with this this color for the moment. Um, zero stitches for today, so I'm just starting and I haven't picked it up in uh, probably two or three weeks. I can confirm that with my um, with my calendar, but almost 5,000 stitches. Um, so let's get started. Okay, before I go too forward, I think I should lock lock the focus so it wouldn't refocus on my fingers every every time my hands come in and out. So if you're interested uh, what kind of fabric I'm working on, um, this is uh, 18 count uh, Zweigart Ada, and it is color um, English Mist. So this is not, this is not white. Uh, it's a little bit of a brown, brown color. Um, this was a little bit of an accidental requirement for me. Um, I was looking for something that is not 25 count or 20 count. Uh, I wanted to do a bit of a larger holes, um, well not holes, larger crosses or cross stitches. And in order for the large piece to, to fit such a canvas, I had a very limited choice in uh, my local uh, craft stores um, so we have a very we're very fortunate to have a stitching specifically craft store um, just about 40 minutes away from me and in order for it to be on Ada and those larger larger sized stitches um, I had a very <laughs> limited choice. It was Christmas green, um, this one, and a couple of other very bright colors. So I think that I accidentally landed on a gold mine. Um, and what I mean by that is it's actually really nice to work on something that is not white. Um, I was a little bit concerned at first that such a large piece and am I going to be able to do it on a darker count? Um, but I actually quite like it. It's really soft on the eyes. I can clearly see everything. It's maybe it would have been nice to have it a little bit lighter, so maybe not English mist, but um, something a bit creamier. Um, but still like this kind of brownish color just works really, really nice on the eyes, um, surprisingly.
also because the the scene is of a library and it's a dark library um, there aren't that many bright or pale colors um, so I thought that if the foundation is on the brown side whatever peaks and gaps that will be visible um, for instance between stitches that are not completely covering it will be absolutely uh, reasonable to have it So for those who have seen some of my other uh, Stitch With Me videos, you guys know that I'm stitching the park. Um, I call it the park. Um, and that is my first hate. And I was enjoying it so much. And I decided to pick up like a sec. Ugh. Ugh. I decided to pick up a second hate. Um, a little bit on a whim, but not too much on a whim. I was thinking about it. <laughs> I guess thinking considers as a rational rational action. Um, but to give you a little bit of a story as uh, why am I stitching this one specifically and why in Max color and such a nice um, large supersized version of it um, as well as such a low count or is that a high count? Anyhow, the, the end result is a large, large work. Um, about half a year ago, I picked up a puzzle. Um, so I'm located here in Canada and we have this store called Winners. And that's just a place with a whole bunch of discounted uh, branded items. Um, so it's mainly for clothes, but they also have a home, home section. And in the home section, they have a whole bunch of puzzles. And periodically I just pop in and I see if they have anything interesting because I really enjoy making puzzles. Um, I like the the 1000 1, pieces. That's kind of like my sweet spot. Um, I just enjoy doing that in the winter, especially. It gives me a little bit of a mental break from everything else. And it's nice to sort of find pieces that fit together and it, it provides like some level of satisfaction. Um, so I saw a, this particular puzzle uh, with this image. I did not know who Randall Spengler was or what, um, that there was a cross stitch of it. Um, at the time, I don't think I even was aware of Hade. Um, I was just stitching regular things for magazines. Um, so I did the puzzle and I remember having a lot of uh, very vivid um, impressions and thoughts about what it was like uh, looking for the pieces in the puzzle, having the different colors, um, the different ceilings and vaultings, and the different like carvings. Uh, so I was having a really like impressionable experience doing that particular puzzle. And I love to read, so my husband and I, we have a whole bunch of shelves of books um, and one day when we moved to a bigger house, my dream is to have a full-on library room where we can have our friends and family come over and have a fireplace in there and just kind of allow people to borrow books and like enjoy, enjoy the, all the different stories, um, that they're out there. And so I really enjoyed this puzzle. Um, and so at the beginning of the year, when I was looking for um, a full coverage on the Hade website. I came across the puzzle, uh, not the puzzle, the park. Um, I suppose they both start with a piece, so it's a bit confusing, but I started with the park and I thought this is, I like it. I like the painting. I like the story behind the painting. Um, I like how it's made out of dots. Um, and that's so appropriate to cross stitch dots on dots. Um, so I was kind of pretty, quite excited about this and anyone who has been to the Heaven and Earth uh, Designs website, you know, it's a, it's a Pandora box. There's so many artists and each artist has, um, like sometimes 
pages upon pages of all the different works that they have. Uh, so I didn't even come across Randall Spengler because I wasn't looking for cartoonish like um, um, projects or charts. I was looking more for fine art, uh, antiques, um, classical, uh, things like that. Uh, so I didn't even see that they had this available. So I picked up the park and I started stitching on the park and I was quite surprised of how much I enjoy it. Um, so I was stitching on the park and periodically I would go to uh, the Heaven and Earth Design website just kind of to be like, I don't know, candy? eye candy just to look at things <laughs> i mean it's a it's a bad idea to start multiple of those i mean maybe it's not a bad idea you do you but uh, <laughs> it's really easy to just get carried over and and do a whole bunch of them uh so i was looking around and one day i was telling telling my husband how lots of people are stitching of this Randall Spangler guys um, or not guys he's a single guy um, and so we went on his page and sort of like started scrolling around and one of his earlier on his earlier pages um, I see something that looked very similar to the puzzle that I was doing uh, a couple months ago and it just clicked to me like I recognized the style of drawing I recognized the old couple I recognized the house with um, floor to ceiling uh, books and this desire to find <laughs> desire to find this painting that I was making a puzzle of and find if it has a cross stitch version of it. Um, so of course I was scrolling down and clicking and clicking and clicking and I mean you, you guys know the end of the story. I found it. It exists. Um, and then I felt like, oh, I have to do this. I have to do this. So I made a mini deal with myself. I thought I'm going to get 20% on the park, the park uh, stitch, and then I'll start the, uh, the, the library one. Um, that did not happen. <laughs> I thought if I'm going to be doing this, it's going to be a long time. I'm just, I might as well just start now. Um, and not get anything else for the next little while. Um, so that's kind of what I did. So I got the really large one because the plan is that by the time I finish this, we'll be able to have that dream library that I'm having. And so that can be one of the centerpieces um, in that library room. So that was a long story, but quite I think it's interesting <laughs> I hope you enjoyed listening to this um so I'm just going to be switching right now different third color so give me just a second as I'm panning around the the pattern okay So I usually like to work from the bottom to the top, uh, but I decided to try to work from the top to the bottom. I still uh, maintained my my love to starting from the right, working towards the left. Um, so I didn't want to change that because I thought if I do change that as well, I'll just go crazy. It will confuse me and I would not enjoy this confusion. Um, and just like I'm working with the uh, park, project I do I try to do one page at a time and just ah oh, is that called the typewriter's method if that's what it is then that's what I'm doing so I'm basically selecting the next color that is available within the row and then I just do it wherever it leads me once I run out of thread I select the next uh, the next um, stitch um, so right now I'm going to be working here it happens to be that those two are an identical color so I'll probably select whatever is out here afterwards um, and so forth. And so once I finish this row, then I move on to the next one. Um, I like this because it eliminates um, the choice of selecting what to do next, but at the same time, I'm still doing something like a cross country method where I'm not bound to a single square or a region. Um, so.
Okay, what's going on here? Uh oh. I think I know what's going on. So, in terms of timeline, I'm 10 years. <laughs> I think this is going to take 10 years. Um, if I would stitch 700 stitches every single day on this uh, exclusively, so nothing else, it would take around three years to complete. Um, I'm not stitching only on this. I also have some other stuff that I like to do, and this is just not going to happen. If I stitch 300 stitches on this one every single day, it's going to take about seven years. So I think with those two pieces of information, I think it's going to take me about 10 years to finish this massive one um, because I also stitch other things. I have the uh, full coverage park. I also have um, some smaller, smaller pieces that I work in between uh, that I would like to get done. So I'll insert the picture eventually. Um, I was putting this into the Q-snap today. I had to use my bed because it was it was like a blanket. It was like a full-on comforter. Um, just the scale of it to fold and unfold it. Um, mini knot just flip it around not a knot but good thing that I checked Is this good, guys? I think it's fine. My, uh, as you can see, my stand is just like a resting platform for the um, for the Q-snap, um, so I can easily rotate things around. But also that means that once I bring things back, it's a little bit I have to readjust a little bit, so it's not too much far off. From its original bullet point. It took me about maybe four days to do the puzzle. So just just as a reference um, it was a really fun puzzle too it was uh, by Ravensburger they're um, I think they're German based amazing quality the puzzles are all really nice nicely cut pieces um, the canvas it's printed on is not too glossy but not too matte as well so it's just a really comfortable and durable puzzle to make. And the pattern was, well not the pattern, the artwork is, has enough distinct um, elements. Um, but at the same time, it's challenging that results in a fun experience. If you don't mind, I'm going to switch to stitching in one hand, feeling a little bit awkward with the stand being right there in the middle. I think it's...
my apologies if you guys can hear the uh, the washing machine in the background. Um, it's the weekend here, so we have to do we have to do all sorts of laundry and and other stuff. So. It's a challenging spot here um, because of the arms of the stand. Um, I need to make sure that the frame is balancing the, the Q-snap. I mean, also it's like a weird, weird location. I feel like I'm changing my approach between two hands and one hand stitching. Now, for those who have seen the um, the park, 
stitch with me. Um, I had the camera a little bit further out um, so you can see the almost the full extent of the Q-snaps. Um, what do you prefer? Do you prefer being right, right up there close or do you want to see all the empty space around uh, where I'm stitching? And the reason I'm asking is how do you feel about having my hands <laughs> so up close? So I know some, for some it might be distracting, for others it's okay. Um, and they just wanna see the stitching itself. So let me know, um, because I, I don't mind doing one way or the other. And if there's a very particular vocalization, one way or the other, I might consider um, following along with that. It is, um, it is challenging to uh, film a Stitch With Me session because in order for you to see everything properly, um, the camera needs to be located in a place where it's not um, obstructing my vision um, because I still need to see what I'm working on, otherwise I won't be able to show anything. Um, and also there's the light and the stand and all sorts of other factors, so be, be patient with me as I figure this out. Um, but I really want to show you how things how things look like in real time and also I do want to have some stitching time with you um, so we kind of like do it together and you do it with me and I in a way do it with you as well and uh, I think it's going to be very interesting to follow the progress of my second aid um, I'm sure I'm going to learn a lot of things along the way and it will be interesting to watch those early videos in a half a year, a year, two years time and to see have I changed my opinion about certain things, did I found out some things of how to make the work easier or better or was I doing mistakes? <laughs> um, but you know, life is a learning process and we're always, we're always on a move. We're always in a dynamic mode. Um, and that's, that's the fun part about it is that you get to discover and learn new things as long as you go and it never gets boring. How many of you um, thread the needle by licking, <laughs> licking the floss. Um, I used to until two weeks ago, believe it or not. And you know what changed my mind or made me want to get a needle threader? Um, I thought about all the bacteria that I'm leaving inside the, the work. And then I thought, what happens to that bacteria? over a long run, multiple years. And then I thought, no, I don't want to have any extra bacteria inside of my project. I already have enough dog hair in here that is just inevitable by having a dog. Can't really pick up everything out of it. So I started using a needle threader. I don't know which way is faster, if you're curious, I wouldn't be able to know.
So according to the pattern, um, right, do you see this empty, empty stitch? That's exactly where the end of the page is happening. So I'm not bounding myself to the pages of the pattern. Um, I just bound myself with the selection of the colors within the page. So for instance, I'm not going to be, so I'm going to be doing this stitch and if it makes me go this way, I'll go that way. If it makes me go this way, I'll go that way. But I'm not going to be doing those stitches because those are from the following page. But since I picked up this color, it wasn't this page. It actually goes downwards and crosses the boundary. And so that way I'm able to ensure that I'm not having page breaks. Uh, but also um, I don't switch colors just because it's a break because at the end of the day, the pages are just an arbitrary selection um, of constructing a, a format in the system. Um, at the end of the day, the pieces all together. Ooh, the washing machine is spinning. Sometimes it spins so hard that it starts to shake the wall. Um, and we have some cleaning materials, like uh, cleaning rods in there, and it starts shaking them. There were a couple of times we were washing pillows, or like blankets, and it would get caught like with the momentum and the washing machine just would jump, <laughs> jump a couple of inches um, from its place. And anyone who has tried to carry any of those like high efficiency new new uh, washing machines, um, we have the dryer stacked on top of it. It's heavy. It is really heavy. We're barely able to push it back. So. Anyhow, yeah, for anyone who is interested in domestic domestic opinions and descriptions. You know, I can talk about a lot of things. Um, sometimes I like to work and just have stretches of silence, but sometimes I have bursts of thoughts. All sorts of different things.
I'll try to move the the bottom arm a little bit because it's right. Oh, that's better. So anyone who's interested in this kind of, of a stand uh, where it's just resting arms, it's nice, but keep in mind that those areas where um, the overlap is happening of where you're stitching and where the arms are can be a little bit challenging because you can't really avoid it. And the only thing that you can do is um, rotate the arm to have a more aggressive, aggressive angle or less aggressive angle, but still you have to contend with that. So I tend to twist the needle when I pull it through um, and it's quite noticeable when when the thread is shorter um, so sometimes I just need to take a little bit of a break and unspin, unspin my doings. I think I'll end. I'll end it here. I know there's a a long tail, and I could squeeze a couple of more stitches out of it, but I feel like I've had enough of this brown for now.
So back to the gray again. This corner is really heavy with the $37.99 and the $7.79 or $7.99 colors. That's the dark, dark gray and like this, this brown. Um, so I feel like I just alternate between those two because there's so much of it. I think according to Pattern Keeper, um, there is over 104,000 pure black stitches. So that would be those black stitches. 104,000, yeah. So let that sink in for a moment. Um, there's a lot of it in the columns. Um, so not the shafts here, but well, actually that, is, that would be the shaft, right? That's the vaulting. Um, yeah, don't tell anyone that I have an architecture degree. That wasn't a joke, I do have an architecture degree. Um, I studied architecture for my undergraduate, but moved away from that. So a lot of the terminology is Sometimes you forget things if you don't use them. But now I just need to find where I am. I think I'm supposed to be here. I do like architecture. I do like to appreciate it. And I think I still understand quite a bit of stuff, but I think a lot of the nuances either require really good memory or constant practice with, which I haven't done neither in a long time now.
I see I didn't punch it into the right hole, but I'm not going to attempt to redeem it because that will take too much time and I might mess things up. So my apology for the pause, um, I had a phone notification that I ran out of storage. Um, I had to delete the recently deleted, deleted stuff in order to free up some space. Um, I think I'm going to end it here for today. Let me just secure it. I secure my my threads with the pin stitch. Can't recommend yet. Um, I don't think I have enough experience to to say that it's a good method or not, but I decided to trust it because it's convenient. I don't need to flip the work. I don't need to do anything too complex. Um, 
let's see where we're at right now. So we've been working today a little bit on this section here. And where else did we work on? There was some green colors, I think was it here? And a little bit of that gray right here. So if we look at the picture, this would be in this area. So you see how we came out um, out of this uh, dotted line. So this would be the indicator for the, the page break. Um, but that's all right because it was just a single color and it kind of works together. Um, so I'm going to end this stream right now. Um, so, oh, we're so close to 5,000. So 49, 45, that is so close. <laughs> But, um, so we've just stitched uh, together 148 stitches. Um, I hope you really enjoyed this. I hope that was a good background video for your own stitching. And uh, if you happen to be stitching uh, Rendell Spangler or even this particular piece as well, uh, share us the pictures. Uh, we would all love to see what you're working on. So, bye until next time and uh, have a good day. Bye everyone. <laughs>